August 4th, 1993, the day after my birthday, officers Powell and Coot of the LAPD faced charges of assault and, express, and excessive force toward a man named Rodney King. Since then, Rodney King has become synonymous with police brutality. Today I'm going to inform you about the events surrounding Rodney King. Police brutality has always been a topic of suspicion, but has never made a national impact until the Rodney King trials arose. The incident was different from other cases involving excessive force, and for one reason, it was caught on tape and aired nationally. We all know that the subject of Rodney King caused tension between racists and authorities, as well as triggering one of the largest riots in the United States. So what really happened? Was Rodney King truly a victim of excessive force, or simply a case taken out of proportion? It's important to know exactly what happened. On the night of March 2nd, 1991, the LAPD pursued King and two passengers in a high-speed chase. King's blood alcohol level was over twice the legal drinking driving limit. After about eight miles, King's car was cornered by police officers. Officer Singer ordered King and two passengers to exit the car and lie on the ground. King remained in the car. <coughs> According to American History's 2012 article titled Rodney King, Police officer said he was screaming and waving his arms when he emerged from the car. They thought he was drunk and possibly high on PCP, although lab tests would later show no evidence of drugs. He resisted arrest. Officer Kuhn used a taser on him. This is when George Holliday began filming what was happening from his nearby apartment. When King rose to his knees, Officer Powell strikes him with a steel baton several times to the head, and several more times when King is on the ground. As King tries to return to his knees, Kuhn orders the officers to continue to beat him. After a recorded 56 baton blows and six kicks, the officers restrained King. You can see Ronnie King on the ground being attacked. These pictures are taken from the video recorded by George Holliday. According to American Mosaic's 2012 article titled Rodney King, he had suffered brain damage, a fractured eye socket, broken cheekbones, a broken leg, facial nerve damage, a concussion, and multiple skull fractures. Two days later, the video was released to the Los Angeles News Channel. It instantly became one of the most widely watched and discussed incidents of its time. The incident was put under investigation and four officers were charged with assault with a deadly weapon and unnecessary beating of a suspect under color of authority. On April 29, 1992, an all-white jury acquitted the officers of the charges. Shocked and angered by the verdict, Los Angeles erupted into riots that lasted over four days. In Dean Murphy's 1992 article titled, Mayor Says Violence Under Control, it was reported that the tolls rose to at least 46 killed, 2,328 injured, and 226 critically injured in riot-related violence. King publicly pleaded for peace during the riots. Officers Lawrence Powell and Stacey Coon stood guilty. Or after the riots were, after the riots were the second trial on which Officers Lawrence Powell and Stacey Coon stood guilty. Rodney King was awarded $3.8 million for the trial. And though controversial, I think the events surrounding Rodney King should serve as a reminder to how serious of a role the media plays in today's world and the effects it has on the public's outlook. If George Holliday's video of the arrest had not been made public, the issues of police brutality would not have been addressed.